Um, so I said my name is Antoine Cotsi, I'm CEO of uh, Exoscale. Um, if you don't know us, what we are, we are a cloud provider operating from, uh, from Switzerland. We've um, started business in 2011, and our focus is to um, be a safe home for cloud applications. So we, we take great pride in um, talking directly to people that are building uh, software as a service applications. Um, and, and that's basically what we've been doing since, um, since the foundation. What we offer is a, a service that has uh, uh, three components. Uh, the two main ones, two pillars, are um, the compute service, so starting virtual machines. We'll talk a little bit more about this. Storage, when I say storage, um, I say object storage in, in, in the cloud way. And then what we've um, been building over the last year is, is a marketplace of additional services. Um, in which um, developers, system administ administrators can uh, find tools that will help them in their day-to-day -day business to build cloud applications. Uh, with this marketplace, our goal is not to um, be software as a service editors ourselves. No, that's the job of our customers. Uh, but it's more uh, to, to um, facilitate um, application deployment and application lifecycle. Of course, being in Switzerland, being a Swiss provider operating in Switzerland and a Swiss-owned company, uh, we have to focus a lot on, on security, so that's a, um, a great aspect of our service. We operate from three data centers at, at the moment, uh, two in the Geneva area and one in uh, closer to, to Zurich, which happens also to be um, uh, a bunker. Um, and Basically, if you haven't tried the service yet, um, we also want to focus extremely on, on, on simplicity. So Exoscale, the whole open cloud experience, as we call it, uh, everything is uh, brought to the user in a single portal in which uh, the user can find the uh, technical aspects, uh, but also um, everything regarding support, documentation, and, and, and billing. Um, so, yeah, I'm trying to be as simple as, as possible and, 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 and move away the complexity of the data center. We are in 2015. Uh, we did not want to bring all the complexity of, of data centers, VLANs, etc., in a, in a web interface. Uh, the idea is to uh, our future of IT is that this can be much more simple. Why do we call this open cloud? Why, why is it open exactly? Three, three main reasons. Um, and, and, and one that's also obvious is, uh, first of all, it's built on, on open source technology and not the open stack that we've heard a lot of before, but uh, our main orchestration product is a cloud stack, the other um, major open source pla orchestration platform. Um, sorry, this went too fast. Um, but it's also open because we provide um, uh, a large set of um, uh, operating systems in in the platform. It's not only uh, we're not only a Linux uh, cloud provider. We also provide uh, Windows instances and all the uh, Windows mechanisms that you you, you can uh, um, apply DevOps concepts to to Windows instances too. Um, but all those machines, all those templates can benefit from the same uh, um, DNA. So all charges are, are built by the minute. So a, a minute of computing is the is the is the lowest um, uh, unit. Uh, we try to provide the fastest I/O possible. We are currently shifting towards full SSD, and it's in our name, so everything is is scalable. Um, from the instant size to the disk size. Uh, one thing I would like to particularly highlight is, is the rise of, um, um, we've talked a lot about in the conference about microservices and obviously containers are, are one of the, the pillars of this. Um, we've been one of uh, the, the earliest adopters of uh, CoreOS, which is a, a really bare minimum a Linux distribution which focuses on on, on providing providing um, a Docker API uh, really quickly. So our, our approach to um, uh, to containers today is to provide uh, a really fast way to deploy um, uh, ready to to work uh, Docker machine um, with uh, with CoreOS. 
Second reason why it's open, APIs. We would not call this cloud if it weren't for, for APIs. Uh, we, we have, a, lang we have a, a library, a tool for any language, whether you are shop developing it in Java, in Python, in Ruby. Uh, we have, um, we have the, the library hooks that, 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 uh, uh, that fit you, and, and maybe uh, Meb will t talk about a bit more about, about it. And uh, if you want to go higher in the stacks, um, configuration management tools like Puppet, like Chef, like uh, Salt, etc., they are all um, existing drivers that can connect you to, to, to Exoscale. The open, um, the last attribute of, of our platform is maybe the way that we handle um, the, the the security and the networking. Uh, you will not find on, on Exoscale uh, public private networks. Uh, we don't think it has any sense anymore. Uh, I was talking earlier about the complexity of the data center. Uh, so each virtual machine that you start on Exoscale gets a public IP. It doesn't mean that this machine is is directly accessible from, from the, the internet. It's not uh, uh, directly exposed. Uh, there's security on top of this that you can manage with, uh, with security groups. This we did not invent it. But if you rethink it a little bit, your uh, application architecture, you can achieve the same uh, uh, security um, um, level than with a traditional uh, uh, tree. Uh, network approach like DMZ and, and VLANs. The second pillar that we propose, uh, object storage. Um, uh, it's it's a kind of a unique offering. We were the first ones to to to, uh, to open such a service. It's a fully uh, AWS S3 compliant um, API. It's a project that we've uh, open source. If you want to build your your own, um, and, and when I say um, S3 API, it's not just get and put objects. Since we our customer base is, is mainly developers, people rebuilding uh, software as a service applications, we have implemented most of the features that are uh, interesting in, in the S3 API. So if you want to do form-based validation, um, uh, auth authorization, et cetera, it's, it's, it's all there in, um, in the API. Um, I will talk very briefly about this. Uh, we also have a platform as a service that's been in production for more than one year now. It supports five languages, uh, but in this case, not the Microsoft environment uh, because it's still very difficult to do. So it's not GA, um, Java, Python, uh, uh, PHP, and, and Ruby. And the idea there is that um, uh, it's, it's one of the highest uh, maturity level of, of deployment that you can uh, directly stream your um, um, your your application from your your development uh, repository. So that's the the ID that you can get. Um, you just say state the number of uh, uh, virtual machines that you want, and and the platform will will scale it into those blue containers. Uh, so it's not Docker here underneath. It, it's LXC orchestration, but uh, uh, we'll soon uh, soon get there too. Um, last bit, uh, we, we are a public service, so, so there's a public pricing. We, uh, we did uh, had to, to, to go through the challenge of, uh, of bidding, like, uh, like the, the previous talk that, uh, was, um, was explaining about. So we have developed our own solution. Uh, it would have been nice to, to have a Cyclops alternative back, uh, back then. Uh, but what we try to do also is that we want to keep this pricing as simple as possible. I I'd like to keep it on a on a single page uh, for 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 as many uh, uh, as long as possible, and and I hope it will be uh, still on a single page next year. Um, so now, with this first um, a quick presentation of the uh, of uh, the commercial service, uh, I'd like to give the the the, the microphone to um, one of our users. Um, uh, so th this company has. Um, is also in the cloud ecosystem and, and uses our service for uh, both for borrowing its um, SaaS version of, uh, of of the service and as a target for for deployment. So please uh, welcome Mark Elian. Thanks, Antoine. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> yes, very interesting. Um, right, I've got what twenty minutes, about fifteen minutes. Okay, um, I've been 
Uh, I'm, I'm the, um, so Marc Elian Bégin is my full name, everybody calls me Meb. Um, so I'm the CEO and co-founder of Six Squared. Um, like Antoine, we're based in Geneva. We started in 2007. Um, uh, I was at CERN back then with Charles Loomis, uh, one of the, the three co-founders, and when, when the cloud just came about, and we were working on, um, can you see this there? Um, we're working on automation solutions uh, back then on the grid, and when the cloud came about, we thought this was a much nicer platform to do automation of application workload. Um, and this is where we decided to build, uh, to build a company around. So way before platform as a service uh, was, was, was actually coined. What I'm gonna do, I've been touring the, the, the world actually over the last month. I was in Canada a couple of weeks ago and then Turkey last uh, week, uh, Germany yesterday. I'm in Amsterdam on Thursday and Brussels on Friday. Um, and I've been giving a lot of presentations and uh, I thought it'd be refreshing to actually not use slides, but just dive straight in and then give you a feel for um, what our, our solutions looks like and then try to articulate the benefits and the, uh, the integration with uh, the Exoscale um, service. So what I'm gonna present here is a slipstream. That's what, what we do. It's our, it's our core product. Uh, everything I'm gonna show you today is built out of our open source core. So it's an Apache 2.0 uh, open source license and it's uh, hosted on GitHub. So you can go there and then download it and, 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 and install it and play with it. Um, this is our, our, our SaaS service. Um, it's called Nuvla. Do you know what Nuvla means? Any Roman speaker in the room? No? It means cloud, actually. So how, how Swiss can you get, right? Uh, I'm French-Canadian, by the way. So I thought that was very cool. Um, so uh, so Nuvla is, is, our, is, our, is our SaaS. So this is a hosted service. Uh, it's a platform uh, as a service. Um, a solution that is hosted on, on Exoscale. Actually, the core uh, of the service is hosted on, on, on Exoscale. And it uses also Exoscale as a, one of the connectors, and that's what I'm going to use for, for this demo. So what I'll, what I'll do, I'll just log in to the, the system. Uh, by the way, this is actually my pricing is even simpler than his. It's free okay, uh, to use. <laughs> we basically have a revenue share uh, agreement so that you can actually use the automation capabilities of the platform um, drop in your credentials, and then uh, Anton and I will just uh, agree around what well, we already have around a beer, what, what, what the deal is, so that actually there is actually no complication or extra complication for customers to, 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 uh, to use such a service. Um, the, relation, the contractual relationship is between you and the cloud provider. Okay, so I've logged in. Um, the first thing you see is, is basically a list of curated applications that, that we have here. Okay, a bunch of things um, that is just to illustrate the capability of the of, of, of the, the platform, anywhere from uh, you know a bare CentOS operating system to a Hadoop cluster, uh, just just works at the moment. Uh, we've just added Docker uh, late, lately as well. But this is just a, a list of curated apps. You, know, you can also create your own templates, extend those templates as well, and and, and do your own uh, your own things. So what I'd like to do is just to show you a little bit what it looks like to um, to use the the, the platform. So I'll, I'll pick uh, WordPress as an example. Now I'm faced with a, uh, a little form. I need to, uh, to pick one of the things. Um, so if, on, on this instance of, of Slipstream, I've got a bunch of, uh, of connectors, we call. This is the mechanism by which Slipstream can talk to an infrastructure as a service solution. Uh, you'll see we've enabled a bunch of uh, EC2 zones, uh, but the star next to um, Exoscale means that that's my default cloud. Um, so that's what I'm going to use to deploy this application. Okay, so um, I can tag this deployment. Um, I can provide uh, my email address for uh, the um, uh, the WordPress that I'm going to uh, provision. And uh, hello from Burn. Okay, that's going to be the name of my uh, my wiki, my 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 blog. Okay. Um, boom. Now we were talking about one of the reasons we like Exoscale, uh, first if it's very straightforward to use, to host our, our, our solution, but it's blazing fast. It's the fastest cloud that we know, uh, we know about uh, managing a full virtual machine. We're not talking about a, a, a container. Um, so within about you know, less than 30 seconds, the, 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 the VM is allocated and the OS boots. What is also very interesting is they've done a great job at curating their base images and optimizing them 
for their platform. Okay, this is something that often people sort of, you know, you've got your own virtual machine, maybe built with Vagrant tools on, on your own laptop, and you want to push this into a cloud, you're not going to yield the best result from that cloud platform. Let the guys that know their platform provide the base images and build on top. And that's what Slipstream actually adopts as a core model uh, to, 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 to build automation. Okay, so, so the, the VM is already uh, being provisioned um, and it's going to basically uh, go through its, its, wor uh, its work. In this case, uh, it's using um, Puppet uh, standalone to actually pull from the forge uh, the, the manifest, install the, 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 the stack, insert in the configuration the two parameters I provided, which was the, the admin uh, email address and the, uh, the, the title of the, of the blog, and then start that, uh, that process. While it's doing this, and I, I've done a... Uh, so this is a single machine, right? It's a, a single virtual machine that we, we can do. Uh, we can look at uh, in parallel here uh, what's happening on the other side. Um, if I sign in... So now I've got these uh, virtual machines, and uh, we've correlated the name of those machines with, uh, with uh, the, um, the unique identifier in Slipstream so that we can actually, if need to be, can actually correlate the two, uh, the two, the two systems nicely. Um, what I'll do is, is, is uh, just to, sh to uh, once automation is in place, the kind of point of automation is not just automation, right? it's to actually simplify someone else's life. So I've got a lamp example. Okay, it's a lamp we built, put, put together. We're not the author of the actual real lamp, but um, so here um, my lamp is is composed of uh, of a, a database, a load balancer, and a web layer, which is a, a, a PHP Apache as uh, as as a lamp would be, where we'll basically be providing a cluster of a MongoDB cluster with a, a multiplicity of of three, but we could actually increase that at uh, deployment time as well. Um, we can also, what's also interesting, once you've got the automation done right, you, you, you can actually break your, your model and say, now, instead of deploying, in this case, everything to exascale, I could actually deploy um, uh, each uh, layer of my application to different clouds. Okay, so I could move things around here if I wanted. Um, and as long as the networking works between those zones, then you're going to get the, the result you're, you're, you're expecting. Um, as, as software defined network gets mature, this is actually uh, something we're going to be able to take advantage of, which will be very interesting. And, and that's it. So now w w with this, I can um, click on, 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 on run. And then this time, instead of having a single virtual machine being deployed, I've got a more complex um, provisioning uh, stack where I've got a, a database cluster of, in this case, MongoDB that will be provisioned first. And coordination is built in as well. so that when the recipes that are, um, we, the user provide to build those things will introduce, will, will use coordination uh, logic so that you have your database cluster, the, the provision before your web layer completes its, its, um, uh, its configuration before the load balancer can accept traffic. Okay, um, let's have a quick look at, um, so I've, this takes longer uh, because there's a lot more software to uh, to install than the, the previous examples. So what I'll do is I'll I'll go to um, something I've already uh, provisioned um, with my my lamp uh, example here. Um, so it gives me basically the uh, the address, the IP address of the load balancer I um, I have. So talk about how the slipstream does this. It does it because of um, Exoscale is, is, is doing a, a very nice implementation of uh, a libcloud connector that we're using to talk to its, uh, its cloud stack um, uh, implementation. And therefore, this is one of the, the easiest connector we had to write as opposed to VMware, for example, with vCloud, which is just a nightmare. Okay. Uh, I hope there's nobody from VMware in the room, but it, it just so happened to be quite complex. Um, and this is how we could actually connect the two together uh, very easily. Um, what I'm going to do now as well is the fact that to, to, to demonstrate how this little uh, LAMP application I've, I've deployed. If I do a read here, I know I get the uh, IP address, okay, uh, 29129. Okay, let's have a look at what this corresponds to. Um, Sorry, the database node. Normally is the first one. Okay, 29, 129. Okay. Um, so that's the, 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 when I do read and write, it actually goes through from the, the, the load balancer to the web layer, and then it goes to the, the, the master node of the MongoDB database. So if I do writes, we count together one, two, three, four, and do a read again. 
Now I've got four writes, two and two. So the load balancer is actually doing its work. Okay. Now, to show you that the, from a security point of view, because this is also important, not only because we're Swiss, uh, because it's important uh, period, um, there's no exchange of, of passwords and so on uh, in, in, this, in this setup. Um, uh, contextualization is implemented uh, very well in, 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 uh, in exascale, so that I can actually um, go to um, the, um, the, the database here. Okay. Part of my account is, compo uh, in my account, I've put my public SSH key, so I can SSH to the machine. Um, and kill the database um, just to so that you, you, you know I'm not cheating. So 29 on 29, right? This is where we're taking the data from. So if I basically kill that process, if I sudo it works better. Okay, and I read again on 31. Okay, so basically the system has discovered, detected that the, the first node of the database is broken and rebalanced itself. So we're able to do a kind of real, real life deployments. And if I do one, two, three, four, it still works from a different database, but the, the, the load balancing works uh, still. Okay, so this is just an example of, of how using an open um, platform, people can actually take advantage of uh, those types of, 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 of automation um, that actually takes advantage of the infrastructure of the service under the hood and doesn't just put a, a thick blanket on top of it, which, which I think is uh, what well, we're quite excited about this uh, collaboration. So. That's it. Maybe can you talk just a, one minute about the way you provision your SaaS yourself? On top of the way we've done it on top of exoscale. I mean, it, 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 chicken and egg, no? Chicken and egg, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, what is interesting is that we, we our primary cloud is exoscale, so the SaaS is hosted on exoscale. We use uh, DevOps, um, so basically from our Jenkins server, we actually build a new version of Slipstream. Um, then Slipstream itself takes the N plus one or two uh, version and deploys that uh, as well on on on, uh, on on exoscale, so we're always able to have the production system plus the development versions and one or two release candidate for the next the next round, and we try to iterate over two to three weeks. And this is how we we're able to close the loop, where basically we we eat our own dog food. We're the first users of our own software, um, and we're able to do this actually daily and not more, or nightly if you want, where we're able to rebuild from the ground up uh, a full solution on one or, or several nodes, because we have also a high availability uh, deployment that is also available on, on, on the Exoscale platform. Um, so it <laughs> it's a bit incestuous in, in, in some ways, but it gives us great, great feedback over the stability of the, of, uh, of the platform and, and our software on that platform. Yeah, um, one last question maybe. What's next for, for Slipstream on, on the roadmap regarding the um, automation cloud features? So uh, auto scale is is what uh, so what we call mutable deployment is already has been in beta stage since um, um, February. CERN has uh, has played with it. They managed to over five weeks um, you know, deploy 32,000 virtual machines uh, on some of their cloud infrastructure using our our, our feature. So it's getting there um, uh, clearly. Um, Integration with uh, Docker, Docker Swarm is very interesting. The closing the loop with Autoscale so that we can pr provision a uh, monitoring system as part of our deployment is, is also the next stage. And integration with uh, object storage straight in the Slipstream model so that if the cloud provides something like uh, your, your object store, then the, the model will be able to remain um, uh, lock-in free if you want. So we'll be able to apply uh, uh, a Slipstream application model that includes uh, object storage dependencies into a cloud environment. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there some questions? Yes, please, there, in the back. <laughs> Yes, please. So, um, 
so I'm also working in cloud orchestration somehow, so that's why I have a uh, couple of questions. Uh, first, can you do service composition, for instance? So take two of your service from your marketplace and make them work together to build something uh, on top of them? Yeah, absolutely. If, uh, if we look at the, um, the lamp I was talking about, it actually builds on top of another module that is uh, the uh, MongoDB uh, component. Okay. And you can also, if there was a database as a service solution that was provided by the cloud, then you could actually replace this by that service endpoint instead. Remember, every brick is independent of each other, and they express uh, you know, their, their requirements in forms of input and output parameters. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's it. So you can actually reuse and recompose that, uh, that solution. What we're working on, which is another feature, is to take an ensemble of those and turn this into a service that is already, uh, already uh, provisioned. So you could have um, uh, deployments where their life cycle is actually decoupled from, from one another. State, for example, is one, is one case where you might have you know, a stateful deployment that has a slower um, uh, refresh life cycle and then stateless parts of, our, of, of your architecture that you want to be provisioned very quickly through containers, for example, to absorb peak and maybe distribute this a across a, a number of regions as well. So there's different ways of, of doing this. What you need from a provisioning standpoint is to decouple the life cycle of, of those components, and that's what we're working on. All right. Um, quick other question: on, um, how do you, Are you write a new service for Slipstream, for instance? So you show us you have already an existing uh, service description, and you can choose how many instances of each component you want. But uh, if you want to write your own service, how do you, how do you do that? Or do you write your a completely new service for Slipstream? Oh, basically, there's well, you can use the portal if you, if you like a user interface. Otherwise, we have XML adjacent support. There's a full. I mean, all of. This is just the HTML rendering of the, of the native API. So you have a rich API behind it. It's fully documented, so you can create your own. Um, uh, and we're, we're looking into um, the SIMI model as for service composition going forward. We looked at Tosca in the past, put that aside. Um, and, and this is where we're, so the version 3 of Slipstream that we're working on um, is going to bring us much closer to the SIMI uh, service definition. Uh, so it'll, it'll, it'll help interoperability as well. But you know, we've got the command line client written in Python as well, uh, if, if you prefer to describe your, uh, uh, your, your deployments. But from, you know, cloud formation experience and all of that, from the moment where you have more than even a handful of services, it just becomes a nightmare. So you need the help of some, some visual guidance, and then you can tinker from, from a, from a text-based point of view and then put this in some um, version control system if you, if, uh, if you don't like the, uh, the version control system that's built in, the, uh, in Slipstream itself. Thank you Thank very you. much. M if I may, I think you, you can bring your own recipes, I mean, whether it's Puppet or oh, absolutely. whatever. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we, we are, yeah, or even yeah. Bash, I think, and, and just compose. Uh, we, we, we were, you know, uh, <laughs> we're doing a crazy thing at the moment with a customer, a private bank. They have JBoss on Windows, right, driven from PowerShell. <laughs> Why not, right? And, and this is actually, you, you, you write your recipes in an executable form as long as the operating system is able to execute it. So PowerShell, in the case of Windows, Bash, Ruby, Python, whatever. Put the right hash bang at the, at the top, and then the shell will be able to uh, execute this through the contextualization or an SSH injection for the clouds that don't behave properly. Uh, I have questions. I have uh, one yeah. question. Uh, you mentioned previously that you control the networking of the VMs with software-defined networking. Do you have a concrete solution about that, or you just mention it as an example? No, we don't. This is uh, so we have about um, four uh, research, uh, five research programs, three from the Horizon 2020, one from FP7, and one from the CTI. Um, two of them are working around uh, software-defined network and how to bring this to what we do. Um, we try to be very innovative, but at the same time, from one sprint to the next, we need to deliver value to our customers. Okay. So um, we're, we're sort of surveying where we're going with a software-defined network. Um, even at the API level of, uh, of the clouds, uh, you know, there's no emerging standard. That is, it is a cloud stack solution, there's an open stack solution, and so on. So this is the next thing we're going to do, is to standardize sort of um, security group firewalling rules and so on in our model. And then when there's an emergence of a, of a solution around software-defined network, um, then we'll, we'll roll that in. But remember, um, 
we need to strike the right balance between providing something that is cool with something that will be able to map to a deployed cloud out there. So if you guys are six months away from being able to have that service in place, if I roll it out in my system, no users will be able to use it, right? So this is where we need to coordinate. So that, that's where, but, but it's cool, right? This is where we are at the frontier between research and, and, and application. And in some ways, we're the gatekeepers <laughs> for at, at, at the platform as a service level, at least in, in the world we, we live in, um, to pick the right timing for, for rolling this out. But I think it's going to have great value. We have customers that want to basically go multi-region, multi-cloud for, for broadcasting, for example, and then being able to have an overlay at the software-defined network level built in the slipstream model is going to deliver great, great value. So I'm really excited about it, but you know, mm -hmm. we need a robust solution with a, a deployed implementation for this to happen.